All right, so what is good, everybody on YouTube? It is your boy Jay three times. We are back at it with another video, another flashback video. Uh, you wait, hold up. What was the title? I forgot what the title was. An uh, army sergeant was it? Yeah, an army sergeant was detained for a grenade attack on his fellow soldiers. Crazy, ain't it? How you go? <laughs> All right, let's just read about this. Let's just read about this. So I'm getting this article off of cbsnews.com. The title says, GI held an attack on U.S. soldiers. Let's get into this, y'all. A U.S. soldier was detained Sunday. Once it, hold on, let me tell you guys when this happened, actually. The article dates back to March of 2003. So just about two decades ago, this happened. So yeah, let's continue reading. Yeah, a U.S. soldier was detained on Sunday on a suspicion of throwing grenades into three tents at a 101 First Airborne Command Center in Kuwait, killing one fellow service member and wounding 15, three of them seriously. The motive in an attack most likely was resentment, said Max Blumenfeld, whatever his name is, Ugh. a U.S. Army spokesman. The soldier in custody was identified Sunday as Sergeant... Hassan Akbar, Akbar of the 30, dang, 326th Engineer Battalion, Fort Campbell. Spokesman George Heath said Akbar did, had not been charged with any crime. He did not release Akbar's hometown or say how long he had been in the service. Akbar, who was a sergeant, commanded four to 11 soldiers, had not been charged. Fort Campbell spokesman said, "If he is found guilty, if he is found guilty of any crime, he'll be brought back to Fort Campbell for judicial punishment." Heath said. He said Akbar had been having what? Hell, oh man, he had been having what some might call an attitude problem. He did not say how long Akbar had served in the military. Incidents of this nature are abnormal throughout the military, specifically through the 101, 100 firsts. He said, death is a tragic incident regardless of how it comes. But when it comes from a fellow comrade, it does even hurt more morale. It does even more to hurt morale. Our hearts and prayers go out to the families of the soldier we pray that incidents of this nature do not happen again in any military organization. Army Captain Christopher Scott, 27 years old, was killed in the attack while sleeping in his tent, the Department of Defense, well, Defense Department said. His parents, Thomas Heelan, Thomas and Heelan of Pennsylvania, declined comment, the family spokesman said. CBS News correspondent Mark traveling with the 101 was a few tenths away when the blast occurred. Whoa, that's crazy. So like a news reporter, I guess, dang. A correspondent, what you wanna call it. He was actually there traveling with the unit when this attack occurred. That's crazy, you put yourself in danger like that, man. But hey, shout out to you, man. I heard two powerful booms, then screamings, he reported. A search was quickly begun and long before, and before long, it had focused on a single soldier, a sergeant engineer living in the camp. He was found injured, hiding in a bunker. When this happened, we tried to get accountability for everyone, the colonel said. Yeah, the colonel said. I'm just going to say the colonel. I'm not reading all that extra stuff. We noticed four hand grenades were missing, and this sergeant was, account was unaccounted for. In Washington, a spokesman for the Pentagon said only that the attack was under investigation. Initially, the military suspected the attack was the work of terrorists using two grenades and a small arms fire, he said. Two Middle Eastern men who had been hired as contractors were detained and released. An inter-ministry official speaking on condition of whatever, whatever, said Sunday that Americans were still investigating all locally contracted workers in the camps such as cleaners, drivers, and volunteer translators. Two Kuwaiti translators were also questioned and released. The attack happened in the command center of 101 Division's 1st 
Bridget, uh, uh, Bridget, whatever you call it, at Camp Pennsylvania at 1.30 a.m. I immediately smoked smoke, he said. I heard a couple of explosions and then a popping sound, which I think was probably a rifle being fired. It looked like some assailant threw a grenade in each of these tents, each of these three tents here. One grenade went up from the command center, he said, the army spokesman said. The tent, the tactical operations center, runs 24 hours a day and would always be staffed by officers and senior enlisted personnel. Ten of the injured had superficial, superficial wounds, including punctures to the arm and legs from grenade fragments, he said. Names of the wound would not be released, and the Army did not say if any high-ranking officers were hurt. The 101 101's Airborne was is a rapid deployment group trained to go anywhere in the world within 36 hours. The roughly, well, roughly 22,000 members of the 101 were deployed February 6th. The time, the last time the entire division was deployed was during the 1991 Persian Gulf War, which began after Iraq invaded neighboring Kuwait. Most recently, 101 hunted suspected to Taliban and Al Qaeda fighters in the mountains of Afghanistan. It exploits are followed in Connecticut with much pride. Camp Pennsylvania is a rare base camp in 101 near the Iraqi border. Kuwait is the main launching point for the tens of thousands of ground forces, including parts of the 101 who had entered Iraq. News of the attack at the camp compounded the anxiety of relatives of the division soldiers. I get a little worried. When I think I should be crying, I'm not. Said whatever that name is, I even whatever. Yeah, oh my goodness. I just don't get scared about my own husband. I just know he's a good soldier and he's coming home. He promised me. And that is the end of the article. I probably should have read a different article because I feel like that wasn't that all that interesting, or whatever. At least for y'all. I don't know how interesting it was for y'all or anything like that, but yeah, that is it. Um, but yeah, this definitely was on many different news sources. Like, um, let me give you a couple of Fox News, New York Times, um, NBC News, freaking CNN News, Army Times, The Guardian, BaltimoreSun.com. Yeah, this is on a lot of sources, y'all. So I feel like the Baltimore Sun had the best article. Might read that, might redo the video, might not. Um... I might redo this video. Yes, <laughs> I know. Um, excuse me, y'all, real quick while I look through this. Three hours later. Can you move it along? I'm all out of time cards. Okay, yeah, now I'm back. I was looking through the Baltimore Suns article, which I found to be the most, probably the most, maybe, you know, interesting to read in. But it basically just saying the same thing, I guess. Just a couple of here words here and there that you know that made the bigger difference. But anyways, y'all, um, yeah, I guess hopefully that article was you know cool to read for y'all. Um, yeah. Anyways, y'all, like, comment, subscribe, stay tuned for more content. Stay humble, stay motivated, stay positive, stay inspired. It is your boy J Three Thousand. I'm checking out. Peace.